the Wi-Fi is coming through the wall to touch your device. So if it's coming through the wall, my guess is it's going through your body. And, and that's sort of the, it, it is really true. You can't see it, but it's absolutely there. When this baby hits 88 miles per hour, you're gonna see some serious shit. And that is the story of human progress. One inch at a time. I'm your host, Joe DiStefano, and you're listening to Stack. In today's episode, I sit with Daniel DeBon. Daniel DeBon is the author of Radiation Nation, the fallout of modern technology that dives into what radiation is, the wireless world, what EMF does to the body, the potential health implications and a little bit into children and how the threat to children of things like constant Wi-Fi exposure and potentially 5G could be worse than we think. You know, as many of you know, uh, I just had a baby in the past month. And while I didn't have a baby, Amelia had our baby. And we've been taking what, what some would call extreme precautions around cell phones near him, Wi-Fi exposure, etc. Because As I think, we're not going to find out that these things are good for us. And worst case scenario, radiation and the amount we're being exposed to could end up being the, quote, smoking of our generation. We may find out in a couple of decades that the amount of radiation we expose ourselves to, keeping the cell phone in the pocket, not mitigating Wi-Fi exposure, et cetera, may be something that causes serious health complications later. And in Daniel's book, he dives into all of that. And we dive deep on this show into all my little post-it notes that I've got right now sticking outside of all these different pages. And and it's a really great interview that dives deep into this stuff. If you listen to my podcast with Arthur Menard, we touched on a lot of it and kind of grounded us in what level of exposure we're at. And in this show, we kind of dive into the specific potential health risks, especially as it relates to children and the brain. So I hope you guys enjoy this show. Daniel is also the founder of a company called Defender Shield, which makes products, the uh, fanny pack that I put my cell phone in when I go on hikes and lots of other anti-EMF and EMF blocking devices. If you check them out, he's been generous generous to create code STACKED, which is going to save you a whopping 20% on all of Defender Shield's products, which you can find right at DefenderShield.com. So thank you, Daniel, for that. And yeah, guys, as always, I hope you enjoy the show. Please share this one around. I think there's a lot of people that could benefit from hearing it, especially as we head into the world of 5G and more and more major cities. And it's not something to fear, but it's something to become aware about so that we can mitigate any potential ill health effects where and when we can. As always, please share it around. Please subscribe, rate, review. All those things help this show reach more people. And I really sincerely appreciate it. And I hope you guys enjoy today's show with Daniel DeBon. Special shout out to today's podcast partner, Keon Flex. Keon Flex is the joint support formula from my friends at Keon, formulated by my good friend, Ben Greenfield. If you listen to this show, you know how much I love the Keon Aminos. But lately, I have been dealing with this crazy, chronic elbow problem where I'm actually in quite a bit of pain. And it's never really happened to me before. And it's been some combination of whatever I went through at the birth, carrying a baby around, my kettlebell training, disrupted sleep. I'm not quite sure where or how this pain began, but I'm actually having quite a bit of trouble getting rid of it. But I've been taking two servings per day of Keon Flex. And honestly, I am continuing to train. It's no more kind of sharp pain. It's a little bit dull, but I'm still able to manage. And this stuff is loaded with fast acting, effective ingredients that are backed by science. Anything Ben does or says has serious science behind it. And when you look at the label, you're going to find ingredients that you just don't see in other products for joint support. You're not going to see just a bunch of glucosamine, chondroitin. You're going to see termacin. You're going to see these 
Ayurvedic fruit extracts and enzymes that just break down inflammation and really nourish your joints. And I am feeling this firsthand right now with my right elbow. So head on over to getkeon.com slash stacked, and you're going to see all of my favorite products from Keon. I highly recommend any of these products, but Aminos and Flex are probably the two that Anybody that's training hard or has that little bit of soreness they'd love to live without should consider Keon Flex. If it's your first order, you can use code STACKED and save a whopping 20% on your Keon Flex and whatever else you toss into that cart, but it's only a one-time use code, so make it count. All right, guys, that's all for now. Enjoy your Keon Flex and enjoy today's episode with Daniel Devon. All right, Dan, thank you so much for joining us, sir. How are you today? I'm great, Joe. Thanks for inviting me. I really do appreciate having the opportunity to chat with your listening audience. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I picked up your book here, Radiation Nation, and it's a quick read. It's a book that I went through in literally a weekend, and I've got all you can see on the video. I've got all my (laughs) post-it notes, my underlines. There's so much in here that I just think needs to be shared. And I'm so excited that we were able to make this podcast happen and and dive into this stuff. Well, and- I, I appreciate reading the book. The reality of it is I was so frustrated. We knew so much about electromagnetic radiation, but the average person didn't know anything. So w- w- what our goal was, was to try to create a book that gave you a little bit of background to find what it was and maybe things you can do in your life to reduce those exposures. Um, But it is real. And let's start talking about it. (laughs) All right, Dan. Sounds great. Now, before we dive into the book and a lot of the amazing information that you share, let's dive into your background real quick, because that was the the thing that really uh, struck me is you spent 30 years in the telecom industry. I did. Tell Uh, us about that. And it was actually, I wasn't an operator. I actually defined the standards um, in the digital uh, digital world. And then um, once those standards were defined by myself and my team, we'd actually evaluate technologies to see if they comply to the standards. So I was pretty intimately involved in um, sort of the, the evolution of the telecommunications up to pretty pretty much modern time. Yeah. Wow. So, and, and so what led you down? Of course, you're also the creator of products called uh, Defender Shield, which I absolutely, I've been using for quite some time now. And I'm so excited. I recently got the fanny pack just because one of the things I realized was even my car keys, they're, <laughs> they're emitting this stuff too. Yeah. And I'll keep yeah, that. A, Go ahead. It's amazing when you start beginning to think about where where all the sources are you you can't feel it but it's there and it, it potentially has influenced your body um and and so probably 10 years ago or so joe i had my whole family together and um my my wife was talking about electronics near your body and and my sons had their laptops their cell phones all in their pocket and and my wife says that this can't be good for us yeah, can you know, should we not have this stuff near us? So I thought about it and I said, nah, this is, you know, there's no problems with this. You know, there's no exposures that's going to bother you. But then I thought, well, let me take a quick look at some of the research. I was amazed. There was so much scientific research 10 years ago that talked about the impact, including the um, influence to the uh, uh, the semen and the and the movement of the semen uh, being suppressed by a cell phone close to the groin area of a male uh, or a female for that matter. So um, I thought about it a little bit and I said, well, I'm a mechanical engineer by trade. Let me build you some tool, uh, some shielding. And I built it for my sons and their friends wanted some. And then their friends' friends wanted something. And all of a sudden, I got in the business by uh, developing shielding. 
for so the modern like, technology you know, it's funny because like my dad, when I was a kid, used to have like the pocket protector, right? <laughs> right. It, is that kind of, was that the first product that you created to kind of shield yeah, it? Was, it? It was for the laptop. My, my wife wanted grandchildren. <laughs> so <laughs> it was as simple as that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah and, and so what is the, and you were still in the industry at that time, were you not? Oh, I was. Yeah. I was actually pretty heavily involved in the industry for so many years. And so um, did you start blowing whistles and how did you sort of navigate? Well, um, it, it was really at that, that I was at the edge of uh, telecom at that time. And I was um, emerging um, in, in private. I was doing some things I wanted to do. I was a fairly young man. I, 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 um, I retired as an officer of company, um, evolution of the telecom bit industry. And, um, and so I had more degrees of freedom. A and Joe, I was pretty careful that I tried to understand what the facts were. And I made sure that we expressed the facts as clearly as we can. And um, so there were... We don't over-exaggerate or under-exaggerate. We try not to do that. We try to get the information out that you really need to know to make decisions in your personal life because you can make decisions that can change the influence of environmental factors just as you can with chemicals. You can do it also with electromagnetic radiation. Right. And, and at this point, I don't think we're in a position that no one's going to slow down this train that we're on towards <laughs> higher. Joe, I'm not going to get rid of my cell phone. I like my <laughs> cell phone, right? You've got think it in your it. pocket right now. Right. <laughs> so but it's funny. I, I wouldn't use my cell phone near my head ever until I came out with a, a tool to protect the, the, the brain. Because that's really one of those areas that really are impacted by the, uh, the emissions in our environment. So, yeah, and it's you know what's really interesting is I've been looking. I'm very into the brain. It's a it's a topic oh. of conversation. I've had a traumatic brain injury myself, and I'm very you know in terms of brain health, it's you know there's a reason why my fridge is full of fish oil, and I'm on the phone talking to you. It's, it's right. a it's yeah. a topic that is near and dear to my heart, of course, and. Brain cancer, and I think brain cancer and fertility are two areas that I think probably the research points to the most. Um, and there's a lot of that, a lot of this information in your book. Now, when we look at brain cancer, one of the things that is sort of interesting to me is I've looked into fertility rates and brain cancers dating back right. to about the 1970s. And interestingly, right. somewhere around 1970, fertility rates just plummeted. But oh, brain yeah. cancer rates have actually been pretty steady across the past three to four decades. What if cell phones are part of the issue? What what's going on with that? So, trend? so you actually have to read the research that said it's not increased over time because some cancers of the brain did decrease while others increased. So what we know is over the last 10 years, you're referencing research that showed, if you looked at that detail, that in fact, the frontal lobe cancer has grown 2% for 10 years, compounding every year. And so on the average, the brain is not had increased cancer levels, but the frontal lobe, which is the part of the body that's most susceptible to cell phones, believe it or not, right? It's close here. It's towards the head, uh, frontal lobe. And that's where the most influence is. And, and by the way, I, I want to sort of cut to the chase a little bit about the brain. You know, we're going to probably talk about cell being degraded, oxidative stress, and you're going to talk about the penetration of um, the uh, calcium into the, into the cell itself and breaking it down and, and you get mutated cells and all that kind of thing. We're going to talk about that. But Joe, the biggest thing and the greatest concern is the anxiety, the neurological impacts, the physiological impacts within the brain from this environmental change in our uh, that that is now uh, influencing uh, the the primary control of the body, the brain. And if you look at ADHD, um, 
a lot of the um, impairments of behavioral in schools, that's growing exponentially. Well, this, in my book, actually, I talk a little bit about the correlation, and there continues to be those correlations. So we're more worried about that kind of um, impact than we are the, this cancer in the frontal lobe, although we know this happening. And, I, and we'll talk about those mechanics. But, but, but the bottom line is it's important to recognize, particularly for the very young, your inf- when I grew up, I didn't have a cell phone. And when I got a cell phone, I couldn't call anybody because I had no friends that had a cell phone, <laughs> right? So I haven't had much exposure in my lifetime. But your children, you're going to give them a cell phone when they're six years old to talk to their grandma. Just think of the difference in the environment impact to your body and your son's or your daughter's body. Very different than when we grew up. Believe me. And, and it's top of mind. My son is literally due today so we're oh my goodness congratulations <laughs> <laughs> so we're, we're just sitting at home waiting for that you know waiting for that bell to go off and then we're gonna fly out of here <laughs> so if you want to cut short i know why <laughs> yeah 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 exactly exactly now dan so so when we think about emf and i want to dive deeper now let's begin with sort of i suppose what emf is doing to like the 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 harm the, the harmony inside the body right so we talked about you know this is of course invisible and in your book you actually have a picture of what Washington D.C. would look like if you could see EMF if you could see this radiation right. and it looks right. like you know the Matrix it's just this like foggy sloppiness so when we think about our bodies as an electrical an energetic you know, we're energetic beings and we're walking around and our body, you know, you tell me, but we're always trying to kind of connect with the environment. What disruption to that harmony is EMF creating? And what, you know, what is actually happening inside of our systems that's so deleterious to health? Okay. um, So if you have a router on another side of the wall and you have concrete on the wall, and you're using a device um, in front of you, the Wi-Fi is coming through the wall to touch your device. So if it's coming through the wall, my guess is it's going through your body. And and that's sort of the, it, it is really true. You can't see it, but it's absolutely there. Uh, and so think about modern day. When you have a living room, you have the router in the other room, you have your laptop in your lap, your wife has her iPad on, and um, and your cell phone is over in the corner. Your cell phone has Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and cell connections, three different transmitters that are all active at the same time. So all of a sudden, you have a half a dozen transmitters in a room, and they're all going through a wall. And by the way, also you. So so when you talk about what it does to the body, um, we're going to break that down into two areas. We, We have the cell itself, what happens to the cell. Um, we, we know from uh, research that um, there is, without any doubt whatsoever, significant study work uh, by Dr. Powell, the, by the federal government, <laughs> Ramazani Institute. We, we have all these epidemiology studies that show a clear, statistically significant evidence that if you are close uh, to a transmitter, um, you can see DNA damage and mutated cells. It's statistically significant. In other words, when we were talking about frontal lobe before, and I'm worried about the frontal lobe, it's because there could potentially, what we've shown through research and evidence, statistically clear that you can get frontal lobe cancer. And by the way, you can also get um, a heart cancer. Um, it's it's sort of like the most sensitive parts of the body, the soft tissue of the body. Um, 
and so um, it, it does, uh, without any doubt whatsoever, have an impact on the cell itself. Um, and, and by the way, some of the mechanics of the breakdown of that cell are, are um, you know, we haven't talked about it, what is a cell phone transmit looks like, but it's it's the on-off signal that's touching the cell, and it's hitting, hitting, hitting the cell. And the cell says, I'm tired of being hit. Uh, you can penetrate me now. And it penetrates the cell itself. And then there's uh, oxide builds up within the cell, and the, it, the cell has other chemical processes, and it mutates or DNA damages the cell. Uh, so we know that with exposures, even low exposures, you can have that damage. I'm going to break off a little bit and tell you a story about you because I believe you have um, a concussion. So here's some technical stuff. A cell phone is 1.6 watts per kilogram. It's like this amount of power. A microwave is this amount of power. So it's 100 times more. But a cell, tower, a cell phone is this 1.6 watts per kilogram. If you're concussed and um, your membrane, this, the blood-brain barrier is suppressed or gone as a result of the uh, concussion, dot one watts per kilogram, 15 times less power level can influence the cell. So it takes very little with certain people to get that exposure. It, it doesn't take much. Um, and so you have that kind of influence with the kind of ambient and transmitters within our, in our environment that can influence you. But then there's the other stuff. There's the processes of the body. There are 4,000 processes within the body. And so if you have a cell phone and you put it right in your nightstand at night and it's constantly pinging and you're wondering why you can't sleep, it's because your melatonin is being screwed around with by the transmitters. It's actually influencing the process of development of the melatonin. Even worse, I saw you last night looking at a tablet when you were going to sleep, and then you started complaining you couldn't go to sleep. Well, what happened? There's the, there, there is a, um, a um, cryptochrome protein in the back of your eye that's the switch that turns off and on the melatonin. So when you're looking at a, a, a the blue component light of a of a of a, a, a cell phone or a tablet, you're actually preventing the switch from turning on the melatonin. So it's the process now that's interfering. It has nothing to do with the breakdown of the cell, and it, we're more concerned about the processes being influenced because it goes down to when you have a cell phone constantly against your body, your whole body has a response. Uh, where the immune is suppressed. Is it the gut? Is it the controls? Most of it is from the gut, right? And all of a sudden, I'm not feeling so great. It's because you're sitting next to a router, you dumb guy. Get away from the router. It is influencing the body. And so when you're when we're thinking about, you know, going to sleep at night, because I know a lot of folks, uh, I've talked a lot on the show about wearing the blue blocking glasses. Oh, you yeah, know, absolutely. Before bed, you know, as soon as the sun goes down. But what you're saying is the radiation, too, is suppressing melatonin. Correct. Absolutely. And by the way, blue light is electromagnetic radiation that's visible. All light is electromagnetic. They call it visible light. It's electromagnetic radiation. So you're really entering into that. And by the way, it's entering into the pineal gland, and it's actually influencing those controls of balance and all sorts of other stuff when you have that uh, lack of exposure. But you're absolutely right. The emissions that are around you, even though it's not going through your eye, it's actually being absorbed by your body. I had a, I was on a podcast once, and I was talking to a a really bright lady. And I said, the bedroom is a sanctuary. Get everything out of your bedroom. Get your, your uh, tablets, your laptops, your cell phones. Get them out of your bedroom. 
And and by the way, take that digital clock you have and push it at least four foot away from you. And she was very pleasant. And she says, oh, thank you so much for letting me know those details. Four weeks later, she calls me up and she said, my husband and I are sleeping. We removed all those devices that were in our environment. We created the sanctuary, as you suggested, and we're sleeping. And so you really don't realize it does influence you. And it's very minor, but it could be very influential. Yeah, and that's I think, you know, in your you know, in your book you talked about electromagnetically sensitive people. I think it's called oh, God. Um, EHS. Yep. And I think that's one of the sort of potentially uphill battles that people like us that are here to educate about the dangers of these um this this electromagnetic radiation is that the symptoms can be very generalized they reminded me of when i was first you know learning about the dangers of eating too much gluten or you know <laughs> right, these right, right. and it's well some people get headaches and other people get anxiety <laughs> and other people get gut right. stuff talk to me about these hypersensitive people because i think that's something there's probably a lot of people right now going around circles around the medical establishment wondering what is this problem that i have this very generalized issue just might be Joe, actually really really important area to chat about you're right doctor doctor i have a headache doctor doctor i seem depressed i'm anxious doctor doctor i have body aches okay two pills and call me back next week two aspirin should do it they don't know what it is, and they still sit a, a, a foot away from the router, which is the fundamental source. So the facts are over 20% of the population is electrohypersensitive. In other words, when they go near transmitters, they get these headaches. They get this nausea. They're dizzy slightly. And, and so... 20% and growing because, as you know, we're all getting more devices than we need that have all these transmitters. So our environment now is being cluttered more and more every day with these transmitters, and we have an increased growth of electrohypersensitive. And even more important to your female audience, 80% of them are women. And 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 so it's becoming more and more problematic for the clinics because they can't put their fingers on what it is. And I have I have an opportunity with the work I do to work with clinics and uh, educate the clinics. I had a guy, uh, a doctor, read my book and he's and he called me up and he says, I have. I electro hypersensitivity. I've had it for years. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, well, I'm glad you now know it. He yeah. really did. And and once he knew what it was, he could take actions to help minimize those impacts to the body. But there was out without any doubt whatsoever, there is a clear impact uh, to the body and it is growing. Uh, and the clinics are seeing more and more electric hypersensitive. Yeah, it's, and and the eighty percent women is something that it reminds me of. I spent a lot of years working with professional runners, and both men and women. And I used to say, you know, men are kind of like jeeps, and women are more like <laughs> Porsches or Ferraris. You know, <laughs> right, women right. got to be really careful with making sure they're getting enough food and not overtraining. Right. And, and yeah. it's just one more reason why women are just way more sensitive, way more finely tuned machines. Why do yeah. you suppose? We're, we're seeing that, you know, 80% Joe, women. Joe, I ask that question every day to the clinics. Is it the hormones? Is it the medications they take? Is it the birth control pills? And, and there's some truth to some of those facts. Like, for example, when you take a, um, a, um, a, a pill uh, for any reason, there are carriers, uh, uh, there are compositions above the active agent. And oftentimes it's aluminum. Oftentimes. And so there is some increase of um, metals uh, elevations. And believe it or not, every electric hypersensitive person is high in zinc. Why? I have no idea. But it is a fact. And um, we'll talk a little bit about that. But 
Um, we know um, there are other sort of biomarkers, if you will, that talk a little bit about why women than men. But I got to tell you, we really, science doesn't know why. I've asked it many, many times, but we're beginning to learn because it's becoming more of a prominent problem in the clinics and in the environment, the laboratory environments. Yeah, well, you know, it's interesting you said the zinc thing because anecdotally, uh, I do in my coaching practice, I do some uh, some detox screening and work and right. and I do these liver detoxes with a lot of my clients and I've had a few people, uh, a few people uh, have a really negative response to liver detoxes and right. they've oh been, yeah you got to be careful of that right yeah I agree. they've been mostly women and i've traced it back to uh either conventional deodorants that have aluminum aluminum or, right or hair products dyeing hair etc right and one of these one of these clients actually came out extremely high in zinc as well so well that's interesting. And, and I think back to, you know, one of the, when I take on somebody and I start working with somebody, I first ask them, what kind of mattress are they sleeping on? And when we think about a mattress, one of the reasons why we, you know, I push people away from mattresses with springs is because what I've read about, you know, the radiation, now you've, you're sleeping on this thing that's basically They're receivers, an antenna. Right. <laughs> and now I didn't even think about the fact that if we've got metals well, Joe, Joe, in our body. It's actually, it's the copper zinc ratio, believe it or not. It's and it shows as high zinc, but it's the ratio that's more important, believe it or not. So, and we're learning this only recently, um, because we haven't. You didn't talk to your other uh, uh, coaches. You didn't talk to your other medical community friends, and because you didn't get together, we all collectively don't know that's a symptom. And that's literally true in this case. And what, and Dan, one other question I've been also, another thing I've really been getting into lately is hydration and structured oh. water. Uh, Dr. Cowan's book, uh, Cancer and the New Biology of Water was just yep. crazy. And when, when, when I was reading your book, you talked about uh, kids being more susceptible. And yep. one of the things that I kind of thought about, and now with this kind of electromagnetic conversation with metals, we also have to think about water as a conductor, oh. Right. And so, our bodies so Joe, um, got quite a bit of water if in. you walk into a clinic that's dealing with electro hypersensitive uh, patients, the very first thing they'll ask is, "Do you drink water? Do you drink enough water? Do you eat right? What does your circadian rhythm look like? Because your mitochondrial not recovering at night because you can't sleep well. You know, there's a, there's all the other um, health concerns that really make you more susceptible by those weaknesses in your body. And by the way, the water part is really one of the most important pieces. Hydration is so important for the body's health. And you're just more susceptible when you're not hydrated. Right. And you know, it's funny because when I when I talk about hydration, I say, you know, the body's 70% water. But I kind of realized right. recently I don't really know what I'm talking about. So I dug <laughs> in and when we die, we could be as little as 50% water. Yes. But when we're born, we could be 75 to 80% water. Oh, wow. Is that part of the reason EMFs could be more dangerous yes. for kids? Um, no, not necessarily. That obviously can be, right? There's no question about it. Um, but think of this. Um, when a child is born, their, their skull is very, very thin. Uh, they're... they're, they're they're all very, very soft tissue. Um, um, a, a cell phone, for example, of, of you, uh, based on the stand, it can go in and penetrate by two inches into your head because you're six foot. And it can increase by two degrees by the standard. Increase by two degrees. What does that mean? Temperature. It means the microwave transmitter is heating up the cells around the transmit area. It's a microwave signal, right? Now, your, your child to be born shortly, when he's six years old, you'll give him a cell phone and he'll talk to grandma. And, and when he's using the phone, it goes right through his head, completely through. Why? 
because of the soft tissue, the membranes are not uh, built out, the, the bones uh, are less protective. So because there's such immature um, growth at that point, they are far more susceptible than an adult. So let's talk about the standard a tiny bit. So I, I, I round out that story. Uh, the standard was created many years ago, 86, and it was 1.6 watts per kilogram. The way they determined it is they took six foot males from the army, they modeled them, and they said, we're going to look for the thermal increase, and we'll make sure the power levels are such a signal can't go into more than two inches, and it won't heat up two degrees. So what does that mean today? Well, 3% of the population is six foot or more. Everyone else is smaller and certainly doesn't have the biological com constitution of a six foot male. So the standard was developed at a time where they were already worried about the temperature increase, not the biological. And up to this point, you and I have been talking about the biological impact, had nothing to do with the thermal impact. And so you got to protect yourself. Right. No one and, else. And you, you've, there's a, there's some work in progress and, and I might've read this chapter a little bit, a little bit quickly, but you're, you're part of a group that's pushing towards a new, a new standard to be created, right? Oh, there's no question about it. There, there's actually a lot. Let me go back. I smoked cigarettes when I was 12 years old. That was a many, many, many years ago, right? At that time, the general public did not know there was a direct link to cancer. Um, that's not the research community. They knew there was a direct link to cancer. It took 40 years before there's a little stick that says you're going to die if you smoke cigarettes. That's how long it took for us from the research side to know that it is dangerous to our bodies. That's how long it took. Well, that's what's happening here to some extent. Um, we know the research side is identifying clear and distinct evidences of body deterioration as a result of exposure, but it hasn't evolved in time enough for it to become common knowledge. Guess where they lost in court? Where? In court. <laughs> <laughs> Smoking law, they right. lost in court, yeah. right? Yeah. And yeah. so what's happening now is there's a lot of researchers, a lot of high profile groups actually saying the standards don't really protect us. And they're so right, and they have so much evidence. And I see them continuing along that path, um, and it will go to court. And pretty soon we'll know, because the courts will decree. It's happened in Italy, for example. Uh, the cell phone, um, a guy had uh, frontal lobe cancer, and... Um, they he won in court after several iterations. Worldwide, the cell phone company tried to to prove that there was no direct link, uh, but eventually they they lost in court. Um, and so that is the start. But I do think it's many years to go. Before and and why is knowledge. that, Dan? Because you know when we think about you know it's funny because I I've said for a bunch of years that sitting is the new smoking, but it seems like EMF might be. <laughs> it, it might be, yeah. So why the hesitation? In other words, forty years for us to prove until you know, and that in that time we could prove beyond a reasonable doubt ten times yeah. over that cigarettes right. were you know deleterious to health. So where is the sort of why do we have to wait 40 years? What is the government? Is there is it too many lobbyists? What is happening in terms of why is this information? You know, my guess is some of this is being suppressed. Companies don't want you to know that these things are causing cancer, even though it says it on the iPhone now. I believe it says don't put this thing to your head. Why does it right. take so long? Is anyone looking out for us? Really? Oh, the answer is no. No one's looking out for you and your personal health to the extreme you do. Um, many people don't 
have as much concern as you do. Um, so the answer is no. But let me explain a little bit about the dynamics of the world, right? And and you know this, Joe. It's, this is the there are so many industries that drive positions in our society, and this is just like all those others. Smoking was driven. Sanders were driven by smokers. Uh, smoke organ. There was a um, a pedi pediatric group in in. Uh, England, that um, had the the chairman of Philip Morris in the 70s, late 70s. And they asked him, if someone smokes a cigarette, if a woman smokes a cigarette, is that a problem to her health? And he said, absolutely not. And then he paused a little bit and he said, wait a minute, um, the babies are born smaller. And he said, what woman want, wouldn't want a smaller baby? And, and so it was like the mentality at the time, it seems reasonable, but is bizarre to hear something like that. Well, that's this, this is the cell phone uh, RF world we live in now to some extent. You can interpret and, any evidence to support or deny. Right, exactly, right. But here's the fact the head of the CTI for almost 30 years, um, did a research study. He had a, 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 a epidemiologist lawyer, interestingly enough, and and they said, "Go find out if there's a direct link." Uh, over twenty years ago, he went and looked for the link, and he said, "I think I found a link." Ceremo unceremoniously, they destroyed the man's career because this research they were looking for came up with the wrong evidence. Um, and so the head of the CTIA was recently the head of the FCC that drives the standards in telecommunications. And he was the one, his organization, with him at the head, decided 5G was good and we didn't have to test it. So we do have a little bit of the fox in the hen house to some extent. But that's historically true on in our environment. Um, is it a good thing? No. Um, there are no medical experts on the FCC trying to decide if a child that uses an iPhone is going to be safe or not from the biological impact, not the heat impacts. Right. And I think that's what that's what kind of gets me on this. And, and given the fact that today is my baby's due date and, you know, I want to ask you about how you would protect an infant in our modern world. But I think unlike smoking, the thing that kind of grinds my gears a little bit is you can choose to smoke or not to smoke. And, and many intuitively said, you know, when I'm supposed to be inhaling oxygen, inhaling a cigarette is probably not, you know, but the thing about right. 5G, it's like it's like forcing nope. you to smoke. <laughs> right. I want to go. I'm going to depart and do talk about something completely different because go for it. You have a wife that's pregnant. Yeah. Um, a couple of years ago, um, there was a uh, physician actually in San Francisco. He gave a bunch of women that were in their first trimester a meter and said meter everywhere you go, document what you've done in your first trimester. And he came to the end of the study, he accumulated the data, and he found for those women that were in high RF environments, high ambient environments, they were three times more likely to have a miscarriage in the first trimester. It's like, it's serious. And we do have data. Now, that's not statistical. It's almost anecdotal because there's not enough study work to know if it's, if it's true or not. But we're learning an awful lot about those kinds of things. And, and um, when you have standards that were established for six-foot men, you know, there, 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 there's room for us to interpret how we sort of want to live in this environment as we look if you have here rf is a to be carcinogenic 
The World Health Organization calls it a 2B carcinogenic. What is a 2B carcinogenic? Okay. In the classroom, you can have in the corner of the room somebody welding, and all the fumes of the welder are going into the air in the classroom. Now that's one. On the other corner, you can have a whole 55 gallon drum of open gas with the vault organic compounds being exposed into the air. In the back, you have a router. What's the difference with all three? None. They're all 2B carcinogenics. So when you send your child to class, would you accept the fact that there is smoke coming out of a router? I mean, smoke coming out of a welder? No. But, but you do accept the Wi-Fi. And that's the dynamic of the standards in our environment. It's, there's inconsistencies. There's controversy. There's a lot about it. But the bottom line, and I'm sure this is what you share with your uh, patients, you control your environment. You, you control what you eat. You control what you drink. And that's really the trick at this point is try to think about how you want to control that environment that you live in. So if you were me, Dan, you've got a baby due any day. You live in an apartment right now. I've got a, a we'll move back to LA in a couple of months, but right now we're in Luxembourg in an apartment. What would you do to protect my family, my baby from, you know, fortunately there's no 5G here in Luxembourg yet, but you right. know, we've got Wi-Fi and what would yep. you do? I've already bought your your blanket, your baby blanket. So. <laughs> well, that's actually a good that was start. Step one. Yeah, that's a good start. Yeah. Um, it, it, actually, believe it or not, it's fairly simple. You know, um, when you have a cell phone to your head, it's like uh, that's the hundred percent exposure, right? That's the worst case. A, a, a foot or two away, eighty percent of the danger is gone. By four foot, ninety eight percent of the problem is gone. So. When you have distance between the transmitters in your environment, um, you're you're more safe the farther away it is. If you have a cell phone to your head and you put it there every day for two minutes, you're going to live to be an old man. If you have a cell phone to your head for hours at a time, in ten in ten years, you're three times more likely to have frontal lobe cancer. Fact. So. You just want to watch duration and time. Here's a general rule. Bees in the room. Think of this. When we started off, we were chatting about, like, when you walk into your living room, you have your router, your tablet, your, your cell phone. You have all these devices transmitting. Think of it this way. A, one bee won't kill you. A thousand will. So you have all these bees in the room. All you got to do is turn off the bee. So when you have a cell phone on, do you really need the Wi-Fi connection? Do you really need the Bluetooth connection? Those are three transmitters, including the cell phone. Turn them all off except for the one and make sure it's far enough away. All of a sudden, you're fairly safe. Don't worry about it. You're in pretty good shape. Don't panic because you've done everything you control in your environment to make that safe, particularly important with their children, because those are where they're more susceptible, as we spoke about before. And so by removing those bees in the room, you really do help them. Right. And, and how does Bluetooth compare to Wi-Fi, Dan? Is it it's it's highly comparable or it's worse or it's a little not so not as bad? OK, um, th that is a great question, too, because I think people. Under, well, let me tell you a story. I had a I had a a, 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 um, a clinician call me and was telling me about this lady that was on his team, and she had dry eye for years. And I said, "Why do you think she has dry eye?" Oh, I'm not sure, but we give her the drops all the time. She's really good. So I sent him a pair of blue block blocking glasses, and um, she put it on within two hours. The redness around her eye went away, and her eye became wet. So we know through research that it can create dry eye. We also know it can cause um, premature macular degeneration. That sounds rough, 
but, but it's even worse than that, potentially. And that is because we talked about the connection to the pineal gland and other inside the controlling functions. It really does. It's a window to the brain. It's pretty, pretty close to getting in there. So the blue light, which is a high intensity blue light, a different than the natural blue light. And that's why it's dangerous. UV rays. Do you know UV, UV rays is where it goes from non-ionized radiation to ionized radiation? Okay. Ionized radiation is, is X-ray. When you went and got your teeth fixed the other day, they took a picture of you. They, <laughs> they put this lead thing on you and yeah. they ran into the other room and you heard it. Bzzz. What did you do? They looked around and saw if you were still there. Well, they're worried <laughs> yeah. about the ionized radiation damaging the cells. And that's, that is known to almost be instantaneous because the power levels are high enough to really disrupt the orbit of the ion, uh, electrons and it uh, disrupts the cell uh, and mutates the cell. So that's what they're worried about. Well, nine ionized doesn't work that way. It doesn't have enough energy. But it's right at that cusp that there's that danger. That's why you you want to shield yourself when you go out in the sun too long because it, it can create cancer, as we all know. So blue light is right next to ultraviolet light. It's pretty much up there. So you, you got to be worried about it a little bit. And and when you have a high intensity monitor, w which they all are, that have a blue component, you want to make sure you filter that component out. Uh, because it can be effective at destroying your eyes. So ionized versus non-ionized radiation. This is the difference between uh, Chern like a Chernobyl type incident with radiation, <laughs> right, exactly, right, exactly. Versus versus a phone. And so, in a way, it's sort of the you know in the dentist chair when they put the lead vest on you. This is the type of radiation that can do harm in a millisecond. That no yep. one can deny this does harm. But the non-ionized is, this is the slower burn. This is the thing that, <laughs> right. you know, it's not right. going to kill you in a second. So it's generally recognized as safe. That, that sort right. of. Joe, jo, the other day you and I were out, we were having a, a couple of drinks. You, you drank a whole bottle quickly. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I drank mine very slow. Yeah. You fell on the full floor early. It took me a couple of hours, but then I fell because I filled this my bottle. In other words, it takes more time, but it has the net result of the same. Um, yeah, it is, it's just a different process. And and as I said before, when we talked about the cell breakdown, um, that is a different mechanic breakdown of a cell than if you're exposed to an ionized signal. They break down differently. But both of them end up mutating the cell. Both of them end up creating cancers. And it's just a different path. And now is, if we compare 3G to 5G, are oh. we, am I speaking the same, are we drifting closer to that not so good, more you, ionizing? You, absolutely, you're absolutely right, Joe. When, when you, uh, up to 4G, it's around 2 gigahertz. What is a gigahertz? Um, I don't know. <laughs> well, let me, tell, let me, let me tell you what a herd is. A herd is one cycle per second. It's a wave one cycle per second. Okay. You're looking at an ocean and you see one wave, then you see a second later, another wave. Okay. One cycle per second. Most cell phones work between one and two gigahertz, one to two billion cycles per second with 5g it can go up to 300 billion cycles per second. So the speeds are faster and faster and faster and faster. So most of 5G is in the sub six gigahertz range. So we've already been exposed to this stuff. It's nothing really new. But when you start going up into the up to the 300 gigahertz range, all of a sudden, we don't know anything about it. We, we do know that bugs like it in your stomach, for example. And we haven't talked about this, but, but there are 10 times more bugs in your, in your stomach than cells in your body, right? So what does that mean? If you've got a problem with some of the bugs in your stomach, you've got a problem with your body. 
And that's literally true. And we know there's a suppression of immune. We talked about that in the stomach. And so we know it happens to be bugs like they propagate at 4G and below pretty rapidly. Maybe not quite as rapidly as when you get to 20 gigahertz. We have research that shows that bugs really like that stuff too. So we know some things about it, but we certainly don't have any experience with it. So we really don't know what the highest speeds are. I'm not so concerned about the speeds, by the way. Uh, we didn't talk about it. What, what makes the cell break down is the constant hitting. Remember we talked about hitting, yeah. hitting the cell? All right. That's a digital signal. One beat That's a cell, yeah. pulse digital signal, right? And so when you um, go to 5G above 6 gigahertz, uh, the millimeter stuff people are worried about, believe it or not, now you have two signals being transmitted to the cell phone, both beating together. So you have twice as much load on the cell itself than you do with 4G or less. Will that have an impact? We don't know. And if anybody tells you they know, they don't know what they're talking about. There's no research that really can tell us any more about it. But so, if we had to guess, double. But if I were to guess, double I would, the, yeah, doubling something not necessarily so good. Yeah. Well, geez, man, I feel like I'm going to jump into a DeLorean to 1.21 gigawatts and go back to 1955 pretty soon or so. Yeah, but, but the other thing is, Joe, you and I are not going to get in a rocket ship. Yeah. And fly to the moon to avoid all this, right? Yeah, exactly. And, and so, like, we got to live with it, and we got to yeah. figure out how to live with it in our environment. All right. So, if you were having a baby boy tomorrow, potentially, or hey, who knows, maybe it'll be tonight. What would be the three or four things, Dan, that you would just? This is what I would do to make sure the baby is safe. And I know we've covered it, but this will be a little bit of a a summary. Okay. For folks. So, if if you have a um, your whole house is eating that. You want to wire your house and not transmit Wi-Fi. If you're ornery and you want to have Wi-Fi, make sure it's in the back of the house where no one goes. Those things go 500 feet. And you're going to pretty much be able to get what you want, even though it's in the closet in the back room. So don't put it in your living area so close to you, make sure it's in the back of the room. And, and by the way, at night, get a $10 timer, plug it into the wall and pretend it's Christmas. Put it on at seven o'clock in the morning and turn it off at 11 o'clock at night, whatever your sleeping pattern is. Simple as that, you eliminate the bee in the room by turning it off, if you can, particularly at night when you sleep. Uh, when you use I, I have um, a, a, a laptop. Well, I don't use my laptop. I move it away from me by a few feet. I have it Ethernet connected. I have a monitor. Monitor is relatively safe. Today's monitor is relatively safe. A couple of feet like that keeps you safe. So wire when you can. If you are um, using devices, use them short intervals. If you can, keep them away from you. If, if, you're on, if you have a laptop and you want to use it and you put it on your desk and you put it a little, a little bit away from you, even with Wi-Fi, and you're using it to work, you are safer than it being on your lap. So keep that distance from those devices. So time, distance are your friends. Remove the bees in the room. And if you're going to use a device in, in your head, close to your body, shield yourself if you can. Find a device that really does shield you. And you can use all the devices you want when you're shielded. That's amazing. I have one more question for you, Dan. And that is, Shoot. Uh, on your website, you've got these headphones. Now, I know not to use Bluetooth headphones, but you've got these headphones that they're called like air tubes or something. Yeah. Can you tell me about these? I'm thinking about, I'm thinking about picking these things up. Okay, so when you have a cell phone to your head, it's the worst case. 
if you have it in your hand, it's the best case if you keep it a distance away for safety. Um, many of us can't do that, or the world will know what you're talking about to your friends. So you wire something up, and those wires are transmitting EMF, and it's going close to your head. So what I did was I created um, some uh, a, a design where I convert the electrical signal to an acoustical I use a speaker, a tiny little speaker. It converts the the uh, electrical signal. And now it's acoustical, and I put it up a tube, and I bring it to the ear. That's what I'm using here. It's in my ear. I hear, and these are high quality, by the way. Um, and you're safe. You can use it all as long as you want. And if you want to listen to music in the uh, in between calls, they sound really good. <laughs> That's amazing. So. So the sound switches to acoustic, what, somewhere down away from your head? Yeah, yeah, right, exactly, yeah. Away and from the, the, the sensitive parts of the body. That's amazing. And so the average, because most of my phone calls are, I use headphones, just the headphones that came right. with my cell phone. But that's, right. you're still doing some harm yes. with those. Right. It, it's a rather, you know, good, better, best, as simple as that, you know, and you make your choices and what's good for you, maybe better or best, depending on how you want to work. Time and intensity, right? Yep. 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 And distance, time and distance. It, it, time and distance, so important. Look, you need nothing to protect you if you're good, um, if you're good at managing uh, those, uh, those components of your, your life. When when you have your child and you're taking the child on a walk with a with a with a uh, little cart, don't put a cell phone in the back next to their head. Gosh, yeah. Think you know, it's just people do that. Yeah, it, it, they don't even think of it, but it's transmitting into the child's head, and it doesn't have to be. So simply knowing. Oh, by the way, I meant to tell you this before. Don't get one of those Wi-Fi things where the you can monitor your children uh, in their bedroom those are wi-fi transmitters um and so you really don't want that near and if you choose to do that make sure it's in the opposite corner of the room from your child to reduce the the distance will reduce the emissions exposure to your child you know and and being a new parent we haven't bought any of that because we kind of had that suspicion that it wouldn't be a good idea but it's amazing how many devices there are i mean things yeah. you put underneath baby so that if he moves you get a ping on your phone and and oh the video me. of course and it's crazy it really is i had a yoga instructor once and she came and said dan look at this thing i got on my watch it tells me if i'm breathing tells me if my heart's running I said, are you nuts? There's a Bluetooth transmitter in there. It's transmitting to your body every couple of seconds. You know, do you really think that's important to know your health? Because it was impairing your health. And again, you know, women are more susceptible to these things to men. Right. And I've told the story on the on the podcast a couple of times. I was with uh, a guy named Paul Check, who is a spiritual teacher and holistic health coach and and I was over at his house and he had this rock stack that he had created with quartz crystals and, and granite. And, and he was like, you know, 10 feet away. Like I can feel the energy emanating from this thing. And I'm standing there hugging it. Like I don't feel anything. <laughs> and he says, well, look, I had, I literally had an activity tracker on both arms. <laughs> and when he had me take him off, I actually felt the energy of the, of the stack of rocks, the water charger. And so that was like, oh my gosh, this is, you know, this is a, a real deal thing. So Dan, last question, I guess, and it would be sometimes when I have these conversations with family members, you know, they think I'm crazy. If I tell my mother, Hey mom, like before you go to bed, make sure you unplug your router, or keep your phone three feet away. And right. what would you say to somebody that sort of, you know, I'd imagine it's uh you know, 50 years ago in regards to smoking. Oh, don't be silly. I've been smoking a pack right. a day for how do you, I mean, and, and I suppose there's an answer that just says, well, they'll figure out in time. But like, if it's your mom, it's someone you care about, and you want to convey this information, you don't want to sound like a tinfoil hat psycho. 
but you know that even if they deny it, that their body has to deal with it. What would you kind of say to those people? I, I, I think it's so important for people to become educated. Um, the, if you really don't believe what I'm saying, you decide if it's important or not. Look at some of the literature, and I can coach you to where the literature is. On our website, for example, I have one section, a learning section. All I do is explain this stuff. I wrote the book for that very reason. I wrote the book not for you, Joe. I wrote the book for your wife. I wanted the grandmother to understand what it was. There is really a lot of very, very legitimate work that's been done. And and they really need to sort of understand. How bad can it be, by the way? I work with one clinic. There was an electrical uh, engineer. He came into – he actually – was wheelchair in into the clinic, and he couldn't walk. And the clinic um, doctor concluded he was so exposed in his environment to electromagnetic radiation, uh, electromagnetic radiation, that his impairment was a direct causal effect. And so that man took close to nine months to become normal again. So if you're thinking it doesn't affect you, you may have headaches and that may not be so bad, but in some cases it can get really, really serious. So you really need to learn that these things can be, and then they have to make the choices themselves. Um, I, I, can't, I, can't, I can't bring a horse uh, to water and have him drink. I can only bring him to the water. Wonderful. All right, Dan, thank you so much. Again, for our listeners, Radiation Nation is the book. This is great. Again, I read the whole book in a weekend. It's a quick read. It's chock full of amazing information. Uh, also, Defender Shield, which makes all sorts of amazing products. Again, I bought the baby blanket. That was the first thing. And and I'm checking out some of the other stuff. I believe codes, I believe we're setting up code stacked for our listeners. Yep. Yes, so, yes, I am. Yep. Perfect. Yep. So you can save, I believe, 10 or 15% with code stacked right. on Defender at least Shield. 15. Right. 15%. So check that out, guys, and absolutely pick up the book. We're going to link to this in the show notes so you guys can go pick it up. I imagine it's on Amazon, Dan. It is. Yep. Where else it can they find you? And It's on Amazon and it's also on our website. So either, either place you can go and you can get it. And it's DefenderShield.com. DefenderShield.com. Yep. Perfect. All right, Dan, thank you so much for your time and sharing all your wisdom with us. And of course, for writing the book. Again, I just, I can't speak highly enough of this book. I just think that you really hit the nail on the head and it's short and it's concise and there's scientific references and it is, it is rock solid. And you wrote it with, with your son, right? Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. And the forward was by Dave Asprey. So it, it, it was, yeah. Right. Yeah. He, he got interested in this stuff a couple of years ago and, you know, We've, we've corresponded over the years. Um, but yeah, um, read the book. It tells you the facts. All right. All right, Dan. Thank you so Joe, much. Thanks. Well, thanks, Joe. I really appreciate you uh, inviting me on to, to your listening audience. I, I really do think it's important to try the best we can to help people understand the problem. And it's these venues that are going to help do that. So thanks again. I really appreciate it. Well, thank you, sir. And, and that's why I'm here, you know, because I think this information needs to get out. And when I have the opportunity to sit down with a guy like you and share this incredible information and empower people with this information. And, and I think yeah. one of the big things from this show is just, it's not scaring you. It's just creating no. information. It's, it's educating, like you said. And, right. and it's, I think today was a really empowering, even for me with new baby and, and trying to make sure that I take the absolute best care of him. I feel a little bit better about that that responsibility now that we've spoken so thank you very much okay thank you thanks joe all right take care hey guys i hope you enjoyed today's show for the show notes for today's episode head on over to coach and click podcast from the menu if you'd like to leave a review which i would absolutely appreciate on itunes or stitcher wherever you found this show please do so. These mean the world to me. They help me understand what my audience is gaining from these shows that I'm pouring my heart into and ultimately helps us to reach more people because these platforms like shows that get reviews. So it helps us out so much. If you're digging the shows, this would be so great if you could just leave a review. 
Also, I still give away $150 every two weeks to kettlebellkings.com to somebody that reviews my show. So if you leave a review, just screenshot it and email it to hey at coachjodi.com and my team will enter you to win this $150 gift card so that you can outfit your home with a couple of kettlebells on me. Also, when you're in the show notes, you'll find links to any products that we discussed. For full transparency, some of these links do contain affiliate links. This helps me to fund these episodes, pay my staff, and ensure that I'm taking care of the people that take care of us. So I absolutely appreciate you clicking links and using codes. It helps keep this train on the tracks. All right, guys, until next week, thank you as always for listening. I really appreciate you guys subscribing and listening to this show every week. I really put a lot into them. So thank you so much. And you'll hear from me again next week. Take care.